In this section, I want to start talking about sharing files and folders. And for this, I need to talk about security features in Windows, and especially in Windows 10. That's uh, necessary before understanding anything about sharing and security features in Windows. So perhaps this is the first time in this series that I am opening uh, something to draw for you. This is the paint program, and I am using a pen to you know draw everything for you and show you what I mean by sharing and security. Okay, assuming that this is, let me draw it in this color, assuming that this is your computer and perhaps other computers are present in your network and you have a network that you know people connect to that perhaps this is the cable in between your computer and the other computers. Of course, this is a conceptual type of drawing. Actually, this is not the way a network is configured, but you can see that these computers are all connected to each other. Now, what I'm going to talk about is this. Perhaps, in this network, you have some file, files or folders that other computers need to, you know, uh, see that, need to read it, need to you know write to that. Perhaps this is a computer that holds a lot of, for example, uh, pro formas or a lot of you know documents that other computers want to see. You know, I, I mean the users of other computers want to see. First, this is the first users here. This is the second one. This is the third one. All of them connect to your computer to read this document. So uh, one way is to to stick your flash memory or cool disk into your computer, copy this over this cool disk and give it to your colleagues. Uh, this is not an efficient way to, you know, work around. What if you have changes and if you want to, you know, replicate the changes to other computers, you need to call all of them to come over and, you know, take the new file and, you know, take it. Perhaps they want to replicate the changes to your computer. This is not, you know, not an efficient way to use a cool disk or such thing to replicate the file between you. So we all establish a network. By establishing a network, we all can connect to each other's computer. And now I want to, you know, give access to this file or folder or a set of resources on my computer to other users that exist in my network. Now, the way that I do this is, you know, you know, I have two, actually two ways to do this. Or perhaps it's better to go a little uh, higher and talk about this from a higher level. We can configure our uh, network as a work group. So, what is a work group? A work group is a group of computers all connected to each other using a uh, common network like this, for example, this is a work group. Nothing else happens. Every computer is a, a is an independent entity for itself. This is my computer, so my computer is, for example, computer one. This is, for example, Bob's computer, computer two. This is, uh, you know, Molly's computer, computer number three, and this is Jen's computer, computer number four. So all of them you know, have their own entities. These computers all independent of each other. So it doesn't matter if you have some files in another computer, you cannot administer or manage the other computer. So we have what is called a disperse management. Okay? We have disperse management here. So any user manages his own computer, or perhaps a computer is shared by two or more users. They can just do whatever they want on their own computer. They cannot do it to another computer unless they are, you know, given the permission. And I'm going to talk about these permissions in a moment. Okay. The next type of configuration is a domain configuration. This is what is called a centralized, a centralized management. So a centralized management means one of these computers is the manager of the network. 
so it can affect the other computers. All computers adhere to the laws that this computer is uh, this computer is you know publishing. So this is going to be a domain controller, or perhaps another computer in your network is a domain controller. What I mean is you can create a domain and add other computers to this domain, and this means join into a domain. Okay, now I have, uh, I do not have a domain here, and I'm not going to talk about domain. This is going to be another advanced topic that uh, it, it lends itself to a lot of, you know, lectures. This is no place to talk about domain. But what we have here is a work group. Perhaps we can create our work group like this and manage our files and folders like what we do in work group. So, so let me show you how you can create your work group and uh, work with them. Let me delete this from my work group and now let me talk about my work group. Here is my work group. On my work group I have some users. For example, uh, every user has its own computer. I have Bob, I have Molly, I have uh, Jen. I don't know if this is the correct spelling of Jen. And perhaps I am John. Okay, this is my computer, John's computer, and if I want to connect to this computer, if this computer is password protected, I mean if this computer is password protected, I need to, you know, give a password. So, uh, this password and username together are called credentials. So, I need to have credentials on this computer. So, if I want to access this file, I need to present my credentials to Windows, and of course this is uh, done only once when I am logging in to, into my computer. But um, I, I need to, you know, uh, present my username and password to this computer so that I can touch these files and folders. What if Bob wants to, you know, uh, read this document? Bob needs to give the credentials to this computer too before reading this document. So this computer should have. Bob's credentials, you know, stored in itself. What if Jen wants to read this document? Jen again needs to have its credentials on this computer. So when you have a computer that other users wants to want to connect to this computer and read some documents or, you know, write to this computer, they need to have their usernames and passwords stored on this computer. So actually Bob's username and password is here, but Bob has its username and password uh, on this computer as well. And the other one, for example, Molly and Jen as well. What if I want to reach a document on Bob's computer? So if I want to reach a document on Bob's computer, again I need to have my username and password on Bob's computer, so I need to be present there too. And if I want to read document here, I need to be present there too. So this is a very hard administration in my network. This is why we go for domains. Uh, but as I told you, this is no place to talk about domain. I'm going to show you how you can create usernames and passwords on your computer for other users in your network so that they can connect to your computer and then they can reach these documents. So let me talk about this in next section.